I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we try and blow up the earth. <clears throat> For no reason. This is probably the first instance in Doctor Who of the mad scientist who has literally nothing to gain by blowing up the Earth. He's just doing it <laughs> for the hell of it, I guess. But then again, he has nothing to lose. Except... It, well, He's gonna die! <laughs> well, that. But he doesn't seem to care. <laughs> but, yeah. This this actually is the first instance of the, of the stereotypical mad scientist villain on this show. And honestly, I'm surprised it took them this long. <clears throat> I guess, yeah. I mean, this is like season four now, but I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Well, this was the underwater menace. I think we didn't mention that yet. Mm -hmm. And um, the apparently the first serial set in Atlantis. Which so so they go back. I, <laughs> yeah, I implies that <laughs> they come back. We don't know. <laughs> but yeah, actually, I hope they do. I I want to see what's going to happen with that, with the ending, and how they're like, we're going <laughs> to... Yeah, okay, we'll get there. But yeah, it starts off with Jamie in the TARDIS, and it's, take, he's taking it surprisingly well. I mean, for a guy from the 1700s, he's just like, oh, okay. Wow, it's bigger on the inside. <laughs> I mean, I think he's had less... I think Jamie had less of a reaction to the TARDIS and just time traveling in general than some of the other more modern companions have. Like, yeah, I don't know. I did. Well, there was a certain point in episode one of this where I felt sorry for Jamie, and we'll get into that. I don't know. There was something he said that made me feel bad for him. But anyway, they materialize on a volcanic island. The doctor seems surprisingly okay with this. I guess. Yeah, and uh, Ben and Polly are just like, "Hey, Jamie, let's go do some stuff." So they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, Polly points out it could be, I think Polly does, but someone points out it could be an active volcano, and the doctor's just like, eh, should be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Polly, Ben, and Jamie start climbing up, like, a rock face or something, mm -hmm. for some reason, and Polly gets, like, tired midway through, so she stops. Ben and Jamie keep going up, but then Polly finds a cave, so she goes into it. I mean, it's the obvious course of action. <laughs> And she well, finds a... They're looking for things, so... I guess. She finds a bracelet, but then she gets knocked out. Or, like... Superb. Yeah. She screams. Ben and Jamie are like, oh, shoot. Better go do that. Meanwhile, the doctor's just examining some rocks, I guess. Not really sure yeah. why. But then he's, he's like, He's the oh. second doctor. He doesn't have to have a reason. And then the doctor's like, oh... <clears throat> this is an interesting cave. And then he goes inside, and they all end up getting captured. Yep. And they wake up some amount of time later in, like, a holding cell, which I guess was some sort of compression chamber or whatever, because they're now going down far in under sea level. And they're speculating on what year it is. <clears throat> and uh, apparently the bracelet Polly found said, like... Olympics 1968 something like that so they deduce that they're at least in 1968 but I don't think we ever find out when exactly they are nope and this is when I felt sorry for Jamie because when they were talking about this he was just off in the corner and you might have not noticed it because it was kind of subtle but he was like oh I wish I knew what was going on and I was like oh wow <clears throat> But then he's just kind of okay with the rest of the stuff that happens, so... And, yeah, whatever. and then he's a total badass later on, but yeah. anyway... <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, they go down, and they're prisoners, and it turns out they're in Atlantis, and it's real. And the Doctor's surprised by this for some reason, because he's like, wow, Atlantis was just a legend. But nope. But and apparently... Atlantis is real. Yeah, so... This serial overall kind of reminded me of Temple of Doom. Not not that the storyline was that similar, but the it just Indiana gave me a, Jones movie. Yeah, <laughs> it just gave me a Temple of Doom vibe. Well, I didn't get that at all. <laughs> didn't even think of that while watching it. Wow. <laughs> okay. Then. Um. 
But yeah, apparently they're going to be sacrificed to uh, to the Atlantean god Amdo. Amdo. Who becomes a plot device later on. But anyway, they are strapped down to... Um, to Some stones. And the doctor has like sent a message to the head professor that says, Important secret dies with me. Signed, Dr. W. Hmm. And he tells... Um, he tells one of the uh, priests who's going to sacrifice them to send it to uh, to Zaroff, who he apparently knows, and who who's just some guy, I guess. At this point, we don't really know. But the priest refuses, so he gets this girl Ara to do it. Uh, Ara, right? Her name yeah. Is, yeah. So she does, and they're about to die because. The way they're going to be sacrificed is they're strapped to these stone things, I guess, and they just slowly tilt them until they fall into, like, boiling water or something. No, there's sharks in the water. Don't you remember that stock footage of sharks swimming around? It was a reconstruction, so the only footage you had in this episode were those sharks swimming around. Right, yeah, this one was a reconstruction. The later, the two and three weren't, and four was. One and four were. Um, But yeah, right before they're about to be sacrificed... The uh, the sacrifice is stopped by by Zaroff, who is apparently a scientist working in Atlantis, <clears throat> and he takes the doctor and then just gives Ben, Polly, and Jamie to the Atlanteans to do whatever they want with. Right, the, the, <laughs> the, Atl- the Atlanteans want to sacrifice them without the doctor at first, but then Zaroff, the doctor says, "I won't reveal my secret unless my." Companions are safe, so Zaroff is just like, okay, do whatever you want, but don't kill them. And that gets them into a bunch of trouble. But Zaroff then questions what the do- the doctor's secret was, and the doctor reveals that he didn't have one. <laughs> Second doctor, mastermind of stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Zaroff is just okay with this, because I guess he has someone to talk to about his maniacal evil plan, and then episode one... Episode one ended when they were about to die. No, uh, episode one ended right? when when Polly was about to have the thing. Oh yeah. The... So Ben and Jamie are taken to the mines because apparently they have mines. <laughs> and then Polly is taken to uh to by uh, the scientist Damon, I think his name yeah. was. So he tells them how they get their food in Atlantis, which is they Zaroff has helped them develop some sort of plankton farming facility where people dive underwater and collect plankton or whatever and then Polly's like but how do they stay underwater so long and Damon's like well see it's a simple procedure we just insert pla- plastic gills into them surgically which is what we're gonna do to you and that's where episode one ends <laughs> it's okay but, though because episode two starts and the doctor finally Footage of the second Doctor. Yes. After how many episodes of him? 10? 11? Something Nine. like that. 9. Right? Power of the Daleks was... Wait, Power of the Daleks was 4, right? Or was that 6 episodes? You know, I don't even remember at this point. Uh, well... Something's we telling double- me it's... Oh yeah, Power of the Daleks was 6. And then... Highlanders, Highlanders was four. 4. And then we had one episode. So 11 episodes. And mm. finally, we get to see the eccentricity i suppose of the second doctor and it is amazing <laughs> um yeah i'm looking forward to the point in this show where non-reconstructions are no longer like a rare treat uh coming soon but but <laughs> coming soon but not too soon. trademark valve <laughs> half-life 3 confirmed on this podcast no no <laughs> okay back to the point at hand the doctor like, wanders over to this control panel and flips some switches and the lights go off in the surg- surg- surgery room. Which begs the question, how did the doctor know that Polly was in there? But, whatever. Maybe he just wanted to mess with some lights, no? <laughs> um, but yeah, Damon, like, gets pretty mad at this. So he goes, because he thinks Zaroff is, like, using all their power. Um... Because basically the Atlanteans are divided into two factions. Those who trust Zaroff and those who don't. Oh, I thought it was like humans and Atlanteans. I thought that was the factions. Well, didn't Damon reveal in the end that he was actually an, Atlante- an Atlantean? Yeah. 
So if he didn't trust Zoroff, he just falls into the Atlantean camp. But then Zoroff is the only human there. Or like No, all these scientists were all human, weren't they? I get that's what I thought until Damon revealed he he uh I don't know, whatever. Anyway, Damon's pissed. <laughs> he goes into Zoroff's lab, and he's like, What are you doing, Zoroff? Why'd you turn off the lights? And then both he and Zoroff realize it was the doctor that did it. And yeah. Then but, something amazing happens. Oh yeah, the uh the girl. Her, her name Aura. Aura. Like, sneaks in while no one's in the lab, and the lights are off. She's like, quick, Polly, come with me. So they escape. And, um... So... Meanwhile, in the mines, Ben and Jamie have met these two guys. Sean and Jacko. <laughs> and they're Irish. There was a lot of accents in this serial that are yeah. non-English. They're Jamie, what? Scottish. Uh, Scott... Scott to Sean. Sean was uh, Irish. And then Zarif was German, I guess. He was something. I mean, I don't know. Um, and there was that whole pun with Jamie being Scottish, which I feel like is going to become a running gag. But anyway, they meet these two guys and they are planning an escape from the mines. Mm-hmm. And so Jamie and Ben get on board with it, too. And they've just arrived and they've <laughs> conveniently run under the two people who have an escape plan. <laughs> Somehow always works out that way. Um, so they, the, all the miners are called to do something. They're like called away from the general mine area to go do, I don't even remember what, do you? No, I feel like it wasn't even specified. Yeah, so they realize that this is their chance to escape because no one will miss them or it'll be a while before anyone realizes they're gone. So then there was this fantastic pun, just master comedy here. Where there's two ways to go, and, like, Ben and Sean are like, okay, we'll take the low route. And then Jamie's like, well, then me and Jacko will take the high road. And I was like, okay. Because he's he's Scottish. (laughs) I didn't even pick up on that. (laughs) I feel like that's going to become a running gag. Like the recorder? Because the recorder shows up again. Right. And, um... In this serial, I don't know, I felt the writing was kind of... I mean, I liked the serial overall. This is something we'd usually talk about near the end, but I just wanted to say it now. The writing was, like, pretty... Or at least tried to be humorous, even in, like, serious situations. I don't know. I just felt that it did that more than other serials. But anyway, back with the Doctor. Does it go back to the Doctor now? Yeah. I think it does. Because he, uh, the, um, Damon comes in again, he's like, the girl's escaped. And the doctor's like, yes, hmm, you know, lots of men of science, you know, two can play at that game. And he, like, dumb, he's like, have you seen this? He dumps a chemical into another chemical, and then there's smoke, <laughs> and the doctor runs away. <laughs> we should mention the doctor's learned about Zara's plan to drain the ocean into the core of the world and blow it up <laughs> instead of raising Atlantis as, as he planned. <laughs> Basically solidifying him as the most insane person on this show. Yep. Basically. I think with each of the second Doctor serials, there's been, there's been someone who's been more insane than the last. Well, and... I don't think they can top Zaroff. Dun 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 uh. Well, we'll see, actually. <laughs> but, uh, so, the Doctor escapes. <laughs> he runs away, he's like, I'm out, peace. And, um... He, he reunites with Ben... And, um... No, not yet. He he then? meets the priest. And oh, yeah. he wants to go talk to the leader of Atlantis to tell him about Zara's plan. So the doctor, like, meets with the priest. His, his uh, name Ramo. is... Ramo. Ramo. And mm. he asks Ramo... He tells Ramo about Zara's plan. And Ramo's like, oh, uh, I can take you to the, the leader. And maybe we can convince him. I've always been suspicious of Zara. So he gives the doctor, like, some priest clothes to disguise himself <laughs> as... And they go to the leader, and he's like, yo, sup? But not like that. <laughs> and, <laughs> so that would be weird. And they they uh, they reveal Zaroff's plan, and it turns out the, the head priest is, like, totally on board with Zaroff and doesn't believe them. So he calls Zaroff in to, like, arrest them. And, and like, there's this what? dramatic scene where he's like, you want to know my answer? There's your answer! And he points to the door and in walks Zaroff, and he just stands there, and then episode two ends, 
And then you're like, oh, damn. Um, right. And then episode <laughs> three starts with that scene again. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't okay, Zaldoff, he's like, all right, I want oh. both of you sacrificed. <laughs> Kill them all. Right. He mentioned something along the lines of <clears throat> how the he and the doctor could have, like, been great scientific minds together but then he's like no you had to ruin everything um but yeah he wants them sacrificed (laughs) so they get sent back to the sacrifice chamber uh which i didn't notice before in the previous sacrifice scene i didn't notice like amdo's golden head like on the well i assumed it was golden i feel like it was a different sacrifice chamber yeah do they have more than one of these things well, I feel like that was a temple because, so, we forgot to mention, but Ara, when she took Polly to hide, she hid Polly in that temple. And then Ben and Jamie and Sean and Jacko, the tunnel they were in came out through a secret door into the temple. So they've already met with Polly at this point and they're hiding like in the secret tunnel. And then they bring the Doctor and Ramo in to be sacrificed by having their heads cut off. Instead of the shark routine from over here. They like to diversify. <laughs> like, you know, the Aztecs. You could stab them or you could be Ian and throw them off the <laughs> temple. Um, so, <laughs> so, all of a sudden you hear this voice coming from the, the head of Amdo. And he's like, bow your heads in the face of Amdo. <laughs> and they're like, okay. So they do. And then Ben comes out of the secret passage and, like, motions for the Doctor and Ramo to to come with him. So they do. And then when the Atlanteans raise their heads... Well, the first time they raise their heads, Ben is like, What are you doing? Anyone who looks on the face of Amno will die! So they bow their heads again. And they raise their heads again for whatever reason. And they notice the Doctor and Ramo are gone. And they're like, It's a miracle! Honestly, that's not, like, a bad assumption, given... The void that the stone head on the wall just talked to you. I guess. And told you to bow your heads so the <laughs> sacrifice would be accepted. I guess. All I'm saying is, in however many years Zaroff has been there, how did no Atlantean realize that it was, it was just someone talking from behind the, the face on the wall? Like, I don't how? Know. I feel like it's never been, well, it's been used a couple times before, <laughs> but. But they didn't know the tunnel was there. Like, Sean and Jacko mentioned they only stumbled upon the tunnel when they were mining. So they, like, must have mined into it. Hmm. Which begs the question, where did the other fork of the road go? Scotland, no. (laughs) Scotland, of course. (laughs) Why didn't I think that? Um, But, yeah, then, um, the, uh, the, one of the priests who was, like, in charge of the sacrifice goes back to Zaroff and the head priest, who I think was named Thaus or something like that. Yeah. Um, he goes back and he's like, it's a miracle. The doctor and Ramo disappeared before our very eyes. And Zaroff is like, you fool. They've escaped. Go look for them. And uh, then him and uh, Tha... What's his name? Thaus. 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 I don't know. Are talking and uh, he's like, do you really think it was a good idea to disgrace Amdo right there? And he's like, I will do whatever I want. And, I don't know, I was kind of confused. I never really got if Faust was in on it with Zaroff and the whole fake religion thing, or if he actually believed in Amdo. I'm pretty Is sure it he Amdo did. Amdo or Amdo? Amdo. I'm pretty sure the uh, all the Atlanteans believed it. It was like their binding faith that kept yeah. them together. And Zaroff was like, I'm just going to take advantage of that. Which okay. is kind of messed up, but not <laughs> as messed up as him trying to blow up the world. <laughs> Um, but, you know, because then Zarf's like, oh yeah, well, I'd like to see your Atlanteans raise Atlantis from the sea with their faith in Amdo. And the king's just like, shots fired. <laughs> king's just like, <laughs> I see. All right. And apparently, I guess he just listens to Zarf. Zarf has more power than anyone in this city, even the king, because he literally has the king tied around his finger. It's true. Um, so... The Doctor and everyone else are now trying to devise a plan to stop Zaroff from blowing the world up. And they <clears throat> realize that they could 
they decide to cut off the uh, Atlantis food supply because apparently the plankton that they farm goes bad in like three hours. So if they cut, so they can literally starve the entire city in like a day. <clears throat> um, Genius. So they send Jacko and Sean off to convince <laughs> Jacko and Sean get all the like terrible jobs. <laughs> yeah, they do. So they go off to convince the uh, the. Uh, surgically altered fish people as they call them to stop farming for plankton which is an interesting scene that we'll get into later but then everyone else decides that they should kidnap Zaroff so they do and well, kidnapping Zaroff isn't a bad idea it does not. stop it does stop the destruction of everything <laughs> so <laughs> um, but they do it in such an interesting way I thought it was pretty intelligent <laughs> was pretty well thought out. It covered all the bases. I think the doctor just likes disguising himself. <laughs> he does. The wiki mentions that this continues a early second doctor trait of disguising himself as other people, implying maybe he stops doing it later on, I guess. Hmm. We'll have to see, but what they do is they, they, uh, they're in this market, and the doctor's, I guess, once again disguised as, like, an old I just an saw old John woman. Lennon. You know what? You're right. <laughs> the round, like blacked out glasses, bandana on his head, big cloak, tambourine, recorder. Yeah, actually. And so he's sitting in the market, and Polly and Ara are like walking around the market and they're waiting for Zaroff to come and some guards come instead so Polly's like oh shoot they're looking for me so they, they hide Polly in these carpets yep. <laughs> and the guard's about to stab them and the lady's like well how am I supposed to sell my carpets if you're gonna go poking holes in them which just tells the guards off I guess yeah they, they back off and um, Ben Ben and Jamie come in disguised as guards, which begs the question, did Zoroff not really pay attention to the sacrifices at the beginning of the serial? Did no one pay attention? Well, I mean, they were sent off to work in the mines, so I guess they were just relegated to no one cares about you anymore position. Uh, uh, yeah. Did they somehow infiltrate the city guard? And Zoroff comes in. And then the doctor reveals himself. He's like, ha ha, here I am, Zoroff. <laughs> and he starts running around. He's like, ha ha ha, ha And then, like, Ben and Jamie chase after him. Because Zoroff's like, you, get him. And then the doctor runs down a passageway, followed closely by Zoroff, followed closely by Jamie and Ben. And, and the doctor meets up with Rama. He's like, all right, he's following me. Then they run into the temple chamber. And uh, Zoroff is like, ah, uh, you, Ben, well, he doesn't say Ben and Jamie, but you guys, capture Ramo. This priest should have been dead. And then the doctor puffs smoke in Zaroff's face, and they capture him. Yep. <laughs> and all the while, this really annoyed me, by the way. There was this really distracting early electronic music playing during this entire scene. I liked okay. it during the market scene because it helped set the ambiance, but along with like all the talking people sounds. Right. But, but it could have stopped. Yeah, you have to agree that it should have stopped once things started happening because it plays from like the very beginning of this up until when Zaroff gets captured, and it kind of destroys the feel of this scene, in my opinion. Um, but it's good to see more incidental music. Right, uh, I think it was a few serials ago. I didn't even notice when we were watching it. And I don't re remember exactly which one it was. I think it was, um, whatever the one was called, The Smugglers. Um, I think that I read on the wiki that that featured no incidental yeah. music at all, which I don't think we mentioned in the episode itself a few weeks ago. But yeah. <clears throat> but this was annoying, though. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sean and Jacko. Okay, this, this scene was just... Why? <laughs> I guess they decide the best way to get the fish people to cut off the supplies to insult them and have them feel like they're worthless and then all of a sudden well, give them this motivational speech about how they literally control the city. They, I didn't feel that they were really insulting them. I mean, they, I thought they just tried to convince them that they were, like, being used as slaves. 
Really? Because it started out with Sean going, these fish people are useless. Look at them. All they do is swim around all day. What is this? They're like literally useless. Okay. I mean, it all tied into his larger point. Yeah, but that's a really convoluted way of going about it. (laughs) Anyway, he manages to convince them in a matter of minutes that they're being used for slave labor, which apparently they didn't realize or they didn't care. But I found it slightly strange that just two random guys were able to convince all of them to do this one thing in like two minutes. Well, it is a pretty smart thing to do, you know. They can get whatever they want by just starving the city. (laughs) And it's not like they could just come and kill all of them because then who's going to make the food? True. I mean... They actually, they've got a lot of power. They didn't realize it though until Jacko or... Sean, or I didn't know who was Jacko and Sean. Jacko the was the one who like barely ever talked. Okay. And Sean was the one who did all the talking. Okay, so they didn't realize what kind of position they were in until Sean told them. So I was like, what? Why? But anyway, they decide to cut off the food supply. And then there's like a three minute scene of just fish people <coughs> swimming around, yeah. which felt like filler, filler, but was admittedly pretty cool because they had like all these zero G effects and they're like floating around. I was like, whoa, how did they achieve that in like 1968, seven, seven, 1967? Seven. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like when I was watching it, I felt it could have been cut down. Um, but it was still cool. <laughs> and then there's like, this... did they film it underwater? Did they film it in space? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they filmed it in space. The show's budget went through the roof during this serial. <laughs> hey, those costumes, man. <laughs> those sequins. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then there's this scene in like, I don't know if this is Zaroff's lab or if it's like some city control center, but there's this guy on a monitor who's telling this, like, technician or whatever, that the food supply has been cut off. And I was like, great plan. You, you're, or great design. Your food supply can be cut off, starving your city within, like, a matter of hours. Great job. Well, it's not again, like you can farm underwater. Food. There's no I, sunlight down there, so you can't really farm anything except sea life. But right. I don't think it goes bad in three hours. Maybe they don't have preservatives because they don't have... They can extract salt from the... We still don't know what year it is. <sighs> but anyway. They have the power to build a fusion reactor down there. They could extract salt from the sea. But nope, Zoroff wants to blow up the world. Yeah, his plan kind of changes halfway through from let's dig a hole through the crust to I have a fusion reactor, screw it, I'm just going to blow us all up. <laughs> I think he really just wants to destroy everything. I don't think he really cares in how the end, he does. In the end, I self-justified it as he's going to use the fusion reactor to blow a hole in the crust to get the water to hit the core and steam up and destroy the world. In the end, it all works to the doctor's advantage, though. True. <clears throat> so, um, the they have Zoroff captured, and they want to go disable the... Uh, the bomb or like the drill or whatever the reactor the whatever reactor. pretty sure it's a reactor right but they don't want to leave Zaroff unguarded unguarded so the doctor and ben and jamie uh, jamie goes with them here? ben doctor and jamie go out of the temple and they leave polly and ramo to go right, and Zaroff right, right, because okay. Zaroff like pretends to fall over and be injured and right. yeah and then in this pretty pathetic scene i don't know how they didn't see this coming as you said, Zaroff falls over, pretends to be injured, and he pretends to repent, and he uses the oldest trick in the book, where he tells Ramo to come over to him, but his reason is just so stupid. Did you did you catch that little line of dialogue where he's like, I need to repent in my final moments, come over so your goodness can emanate out of you and into me. So Ramo does it, and then the um, Zaroff gets him in like a stranglehold. But he escapes! And then he grabs a flag and, like, tries to stab at Zarf, but then Zarf grabs it and, like, almost chokes Ramo and knocks him over and then stabs him with a spear. Yep. You don't see it on screen, but... Yep. Stabs <laughs> him with a spear. <laughs> Meanwhile, Polly's just watching this like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, what probably, would she be able to do? She's probably scarred for life. Not gonna lie. <laughs> she's seen the Daleks. She'll be fine. But, like, the doctor 
having a stroke of billions two minutes too late outside the temple's like, oh, you know what, Jamie, you should probably go back and watch Zoroff since Ramo's the only one who knows the caves. But it's too late because then Ramo comes stumbling out with a gaping wound in his chest. (laughs) (laughs) Then he falls over and, and he tells them that Zarif's escaped with Polly, and then he dies. <clears throat> so great plan. So now the doctor's like, well, uh, Jamie, go get Zarif. Ben, do- uh, Ben, we have different fish to fry. And when he said that, I was like, wow, you know, you probably could have chosen a better <laughs> metaphor than that. And honestly, probably should have sent two people to go get Zarif and one to disable the bomb. <laughs> But oh, well. I, I guess it all worked out in the end, maybe? I guess. Um, so the plan now is, the plan they've come up with when they had Zoroff was, the doctors decided they're going to flood the lower sections of Atlantis in order to flood the lab and disable all the equipment. And Sean and Jacko are supposed to get all the Atlanteans uh, evacuated, and, and Ben and they? the doctor... <laughs> Ben and the Doctor are going to go flood the lower areas. A pretty convoluted plan to disable the bomb, admittedly, but it works in the end. Right. Um, so, Zaroff... Episode 3 ends when Zaroff shows up... Uh, at the, like, the council room or something. Yeah, and he shoots the king, and then sh- uh, he has his, his two guards shoot the two Atlantean guards. And basically, Zaroff institutes a coup... And takes over the Atlantean government. Which he'd basically already done. <laughs> it's true, but no uh, more puppet yeah. governments. And then he says something like, no one can stop me now, or something like that. No one in, no one in the world can stop me now! Except those people who've been stopping you at every turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, but where does episode four start? I know it starts... With that. Oh, right. It starts with that... But it's a reconstruction now. So instead of using the footage they had from the previous episode, they decide to use some stock footage of guns. Well, I feel like they used yeah. all the footage they could. Well, yeah, I'm assuming it was reconstructed before they found the episode, so that's why they did that. Possibly. But, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Zaroff... Where's Polly during this? Uh, I don't pa- really know. Polly escapes because Sean and Jacko show up and sees... Sean, Jacko, and Jamie show up and see Zarf with Polly captive, and, like, Zarf chucks Polly at Jamie, and Jamie catches her, and Zarf runs away, like, ha ha ha! Mm. Okay, yeah. Um, so now they're they're all trying to escape, because apparently... Individually, they're... I guess. Yeah, I, I think their plan was to, uh, to go do their own separate thing, and then escape by themselves? I don't know. But they're escaping, and they see some, some radiated rocks, and they're like, the plan is working! The radiation is going to cut through the rock bed and flood Atlantis. I my, don't know. My favorite line of the whole show. They're like, ben and the Doctor are messing with the seawalls, and Ben's like, are you sure you know what you're doing? And the Doctor's like, what a silly question. Of course I don't, but there's no rule against trying, right? <laughs> really? Is it better than the Doctor messes with the control panel randomly, causing it to explode? But this was an actual line of dialogue. This is true. <laughs> but yeah, now that Zaroff has gone more insane than he already was before, he shows up back at his lab. And um, apparently he's installed a gate that can't be opened near Here's his... Here's my uh, question. Why did he go for a gate and not just, like, a wall? Why did the... It was probably for the dramatic scene at the end where he's reaching through the gate. <laughs> But yeah, he locks himself in next to his equipment with the gate, and... We should mention the scientists have deserted Zoroff, because the doctor right. mentions he's gonna blow them all to bits. So. Right, I thought that scene was kind of weird, actually, because the doctor reveals Zoroff's plan to the scientists, and the scientists, without a word, without any question, just bolt. <laughs> they just run away. I mean, I guess that's to their own benefit, because Atlantis is about to be flooded, but, like, They've been working for Zaroff this entire time. Do they not trust him that much? No. Yeah, I guess if they're Atlanteans, maybe not, but who knows? Would you trust Zaroff if not you worked this, with him? Not like, at this Even point. just normally, he looks insane. He talks <clears throat> like he's insane. He's insane. 
more insane than what's his name in the power of the Daleks, that scientist. Yeah. I don't remember his name. Um, Bob. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't Bob. Um, but yeah, Zaroff is now like, ha ha, I'm inside the gate and you're not. And, and then Ben pretends to leave, and Zaroff's like, ha you have your deserters too, Doctor. And the dog's like, shrug. Second Doctor doesn't give a darn. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but, so the Doctor's like, well, you know, this is more exciting without the lights. And he like, turns off the lights. So was it foreshadowing in the first episode? Who knows? Might have been. <clears throat> so Zaroff has a gun. I don't even, what happens, I don't even remember what happens next. Not oh, Zaroff opens the gate and he's like, well, you see, there's an emergency power supply. Meanwhile, he's got his gun trained on the doctor, right, so he's he not really paying attention. So he's like, we have an emergency power supply. And then Ben, I guess he, he sneaks into the lab, closes the gate, rolls under it, which is how I imagined him getting under it. He rolls <laughs> under it to come out. And then now they're all locked out of the lab and they can't get in. And Zara's just like, no, no. And the doctor and Ben escape, leaving Zara off right next to his equipment, unable to use it, and the water is rising. Well, and then the doctor goes like, I can't just leave him there to die. We have to go back, Ben. And Ben's like, Doctor, he's crazy. And the doctor's like, nope, we gotta go back. Which I thought was interesting, because I felt this serial, more than the previous two, established the second doctor's character as as different from the first doctor and just insane beyond belief. But, like, this is one of the first similarities we see we right. see between him and the first Doctor, is that they both don't want to leave people to die. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, and, uh, he's still insane, but you still got that sense of honor, I suppose, to try and save everyone. A right. sense of duty, I guess, is a better word. Right. And But then, as you said, convinces him not to. Because they no, need to escape. Well, that plus the fact that a rock falls blocking the passage. Oh, right. They actually do try and go back. Right. And then, like, a rock blocks the passageway. And the doctor's like, damn it. We can't do it anymore. Come on, Ben. We got to get out of here now. Right. And then you see Zaroff. And, like, the water's now up to his neck. And he's still trying to get in through the gate. I guess he, I guess he was trying to reach through one of the holes in the gate and press the uh The plunger. The <laughs> Yeah, there's actually a doll like inside the. No, no. No, there's actually a. <laughs> like a plunger with two hand with the two handles, and it goes down. Didn't you see it? There was a pic. There was a there was a picture of Zaroff by the gate, and like j- on the left side of the screen, you could actually see the plunger. And it was an actual plunger, and I was like, "What?" No, I didn't notice that at all. Um, but yeah, there's there's like three seconds of footage where you see Zaroff's head go under, so and he he's drowns dead. and dies. Pretty gruesome. You could, you could theoretically say Ben caused that <laughs> by locking him out of the gate. Although it's more Zaroff's fault than anyone else's. He could he, have he just walked let, away. He let. He did lead to his own death first with his insane plan to blow up the world, and then with him being so bent on succeeding that he dies. Yeah. I mean, I guess in the end, he didn't care about his own life. He just wanted to uh, see the plan <laughs> He just succeed. wanted to succeed. <clears throat> Mark of yep. a true scientist. Mark of a true mad scientist. And so, Polly and Jamie escape, and they think the Doctor and Ben are dead. So they're all sad. So they're like, yeah, they're finally dead. No, no. <laughs> no, Jamie's just <laughs> met the Doctor. He was more like, wow, that sucks. And Sean and Jacko... They've, like, met up with the king, who's still alive, by the way. He gets shot by Zaroff, but he survives, because I guess Zaroff, in all his madness, is a terrible shot. It was nearly yeah. point-blank range. Yep. Um, so, they, uh... They also think the doctor's dead. Right, they escape, but then the, uh, the king, and he meets with, he meets up with Ara and Damon, who now know that the doctor has succeeded, and <clears throat> da- that's when... I don't know if this was supposed to be a reveal, but this is when I realized Damon was an Atlantean and not one of Zaroff's scientists. I guess it was kind of a reveal. I guess that's kind of what they were going for, but they didn't really make it that obvious. Right, but anyway, they discuss how the Doctor has saved them, and that since the Temple of Amdo is now destroyed, they should probably build a shrine in the Doctor's name. But then Damon is like, no, don't you see? Amdo is what led to our destruction. 
in in honor of the doctor, we have to create a new society with no gods. And I was like, is this is this serial an anti religion metaphor? No, I see. I didn't feel that way. I felt like it was just they realized that the doctor was like the doctor was against. Well, he wasn't against per se, but like he wasn't on board with the whole religion thing. And they realized against the sacrifice. Yeah, but like they realized the worst way to memorialize the guy who just saved their society from a madman would be to do what he's not down with. I saw it as like the doctor instituting them to like rebuild their society to be better than it was before. Yeah, no, I get where you're coming from, yeah. <clears throat> and maybe they should stop using slave labor while they're at it. Yeah, I feel like that was just Zaroff. <laughs> uh, he was the one who introduced the uh the plankton farming and surgically altering people idea. Yeah. <laughs> but he's dead now. So everyone's escaped. The six main characters, I guess, escape, including Sean and Jacko. But, like, Polly and Jamie think the Doctor and Ben are dead. But then the Doctor and Ben show up, and they're like, Yay, reunion, police box, let's go. And Sean, Sean's like, hmm, that's weird. Look, a police box down on the down on the, the beach. And then it disappears. Yep. <laughs> and they're just like, huh. Weird. <laughs> um, so, inside the TARDIS, they're having some... They're, like discussing or like having a quip about how the doctor doesn't really control the TARDIS and the doctor's like nonsense I do to control the TARDIS and then he he's like I'll prove it to you we'll go to Mars so he sets the controls and then stuff starts going wrong and the doctor's like the TARDIS is out of control and I was like really no surprise doctor also a similarity with the first doctor (laughs) incredibly stubborn about the TARDIS yeah which is okay I guess it is his shit and I guess if I had a TARDIS, I would be upset if my companion was like, yo, you can't really control this thing, can you? And be like, no, of course I can. Look, I've been traveling for 500 years in it. <clears throat> and uh, that's uh, where it ends. There's also that moment where Jamie's like, you know what? I like it here. I feel safe in the TARDIS. It's just the stuff out there that's dangerous. Which is like the perfect way to describe the entire show. <laughs> Every time they leave the TARDIS, they get into trouble. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> there there can't be one time where they don't. Well, there was Edge no. of Destruction, where they didn't leave the TARDIS and they were in trouble. And the Romans, where they spent like three months outside the TARDIS, like just living there. <laughs> True. Um. But yeah, overall, I don't know. I had a lot of problems with this serial, which we talked about. Yeah. Before, but I also liked it a lot. Well, I don't know. It helped. Uh, the fact that we finally had a non-reconstruction because it's like for the post 11 episodes when you're watching a reconstruction I don't know what you think about when you watch reconstructions but I try and imagine the scene in my head and it's hard to imagine the second doctor when you have absolutely no (laughs) clue how he acts physically like you can get the voice but like the mannerisms in his acting is what makes the character come alive so to speak yeah, and I mean, I I don't think I consciously had thought of that before, but once we did see actual footage in episodes two and three, that's when I realized, okay, this is the serial that's really characterizing the second Doctor. And I don't know if that was the serial itself or if, if it was due to the footage. Right. Um, but I, I mean, probably was due to the footage. <clears throat> but I, I like the second Doctor already. I mean, sure, he's a little bit crazy, but like, it's making the show interesting to see yeah. him kind of running around a lot more energetically than the first Doctor did. I and mean, not that the first Doctor was a bad character. I like the first Doctor for what he was, because he was what he was. But, um, <laughs> but, like, the second Doctor is different, and it's exciting. It's always fun to see different Doctors. Right, I mean, the show... I mean, it hasn't gone stale, because, like, because right. of the... Because of the uh, the main character switch here. And um, the second Doctor has a lot more insane plans than the first Doctor, so it's always nice to see where he's going to go from here and what crazy ideas he's going to have next. They somehow always work out in his favor. I'm getting the feeling, though, that his regeneration story is going to be him with some crazy insane plan that goes terribly, horribly wrong. And, you know, I was... (laughs) Yeah, probably. (laughs) I was thinking about this the other day. 
they didn't really mention anything about his regeneration when he regenerated. Like, he didn't... I mean, they they kind of did, but he didn't, like, sit down and word for word explain anything to, to Polly and Ben, which makes me think that behind the scenes, they were still sort of deciding what was going on, and they were sort of leading it up to the point where when they have to explain things, they can leave it open for the writers at that point to decide what to do with this entire thing. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's kind of pushing your problems down the down the down the line of succession, <clears throat> if if you're looking at it that way, or if what I'm assuming is correct. But I don't know. I feel like it leaves it open to do what they want to do, and I mean, not this isn't an, an exact analogy, but it kind of reminded me of you know how in Star Wars the original trilogy, like they don't mention the Sith at all. Like that's not a thing. Mm-hmm. And then, like they intro- they introduce that concept in the in the prequel trilogy, which I don't know. I always thought were the Sith a thing, but way back when, and they just didn't mention them in the in the films. Was it more of like a backstory thing that was never brought up, or did they introduce that? They think of that entire concept during the um, during the the new films. And there's probably some really convoluted expanded universe stuff that I have no idea about because I've only watched the six films but yeah well I mean it's probably like it was probably to avoid retconning things like they probably left it open because they knew what they wanted to do but I guess they didn't they didn't know what the mechanics of it were going to be like they knew they wanted to replace the main actor so they made him like regenerate of course but they didn't they didn't think about how the mechanics of that were going to work because I think they didn't uh, consider the fact that they'd need to have him regenerate like a second or third time I think they they brought in an actor who they assumed they'd be able to carry the show for like 10 years and then the show would end so they yeah, kind right, of left it open however long it would take for right. the show to get cancelled was kind of a morbid thought but, but uh, so they, I guess they they left it like that so that it was still a possibility that they could do it if they needed to, but they didn't want to. They didn't want to pigeonhole themselves into right. having to do it later again. Right. <clears throat> Which um, I mean is is good, but like pushing your problems onto other people could backfire horribly. Like the writer of the Star Star Trek: The Next Generation, like halfway through the series, there's a season finale where Picard gets turned into a Borg, and the writer was basically like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get fired at the end of the season, so I'm going to leave it for the next writer to figure out uh, how to deal with the fact that Picard's now a Borg. And then, uh, surprise, he gets rehired and now has to solve his own problem. And Yeah. (laughs) Worked out well in the end, but it could go horribly wrong and you'll be left to solve your own problems. Uh, Well, then. This um, is probably the first year we can also talk about the amazing sets because the previous two reconstructions, I mean, for the first second Doctor Seal, we can talk about the sets because first two reconstructions, right? Temple of Doom. They go into the mine less, and it's a less cool mine than Temple of Doom. But Very small mine. I liked the set with the. Yeah, I only specifically brought this up because I thought the set with the fish people and the Sean and Jacko scene was pretty cool. Because I was like, "Hey, that's kind of cool." I mean, it was it was uh, it was multi tiered, and they used the angle as well to like to show that. Yeah, I mean that's really the only reason I brought it up because I was like, "Wow, how'd they do that? Did they like find a cave with a pool in, or did they actually make this set and skyrocket the budget?" I don't know. I just that and the whole zero gravity fish. Thing, which is kind of cool you know what they did spend the entire budget on that amdo head it looked like it was aluminum foil <laughs> i don't know i imagined it being gold did you i imagined it being made out of stone oh well okay completely different interpretations here black and white why <laughs> i don't know you could uh, you could really interpret it any way you wanted it is- to it depends on how you see the culture, I suppose. Like, do you see the culture as being overly extravagant? Because then you could see it as being gold. Or do you see them being kind of, like, humble and, like, what's the word? Down yeah, to hum- earth. Yeah, and- down to earth. And then it's made of stone. 
No, I saw it as gold, and they were really extravagant and liked to flaunt their wealth. No, no, no. <laughs> but that's but, the interesting thing about the black and white, is you can really imagine any of the colors as whatever you really want. Right? Is is color going to take the fun out of the show? Probably not. No, probably, probably not. Probably make it more interesting, to be honest. They can use some sort of plot device that involves color. No, no, they probably shouldn't do that. They actually do. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, not really. I read that the transition to color happens during the regeneration, which I think is pretty cool, and I'm excited to see it, but... Huh, that's weird. It's kind of cool, though. Yeah. They could go for some pretty trippy effects. <sighs> but will they? We'll have to wait well, and color, see. Well, color gives us the magnificent Sixth Doctor's jacket. That magnificent hodgepodge of fabric. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't really have anything much else to say. Yeah, just really weird cereal. I mean, I ended up liking it, but... I mean, I mean just... I don't know. I, I felt it was different than other cereals. And I'm not, I'm not even exactly sure why. I'm going to guess it's because you finally saw the second Doctor actually acted because of video. Right. I think that's part of it. I also think this was one of the first times where they tried to do a serious story and also ended up having some pretty witty, sometimes grit, uh, cringe-worthy dialogue. But you know, whatever. It was pretty good though. There were a lot of there were a lot of character characterization moments for the Doctor in this serial. And Ben too, I thought near the end. Yeah. Not so much Polly yet. Well, I mean. Polly has gotten. She was she was part of the she was integral to the plot. You right. Know? I mean, as far as character development goes, she. I, I don't know. She's. She's gotten enough, I'd say so far, based on how how long she's been on the show. I guess it's just that I don't like her that much. Hmm. But I don't know. I feel like before the serial, she had more than Ben probably. Because I feel like. She was she the whole power of the dog thing where she goes off looking and then gets captured and then like almost sort of escapes had a lot more mm. character development in that serial specifically than Ben did and this was kind of bringing Ben up to speed I suppose well, I don't know it's arguable because I I think Ben had a lot more in um, Highlanders uh, Tenth that, Planet that too but Tenth Planet yeah <clears throat> yeah. So next week we have animation, so that's going to be exciting. Yay! Hopefully it's not like Reign of Terror company who who, who did it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm also fairly certain next week is going to be the first modification to the theme tune. Although if it is, if it is, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Um. And so check us out on iTunes. Uh, rate us on iTunes. Check out the website. Check out the Facebook page that exists now. It's called Trust Your Doctor. Surprise. <laughs> and email us at the doctor at decorativevegetable.com. And next week we have The Moon Base. And but until then, the end. Uh-huh.